Hi, uh, I'm Ian Kinnersley. I work at Sidekick Studios. Uh, we help organisations innovate like startups. Um, I'm a product lead, which means that I run projects, I uh, interact with clients, I bring new clients in, uh, but crucially, I'm a technologist, uh, so I spend a lot of my time actually writing code and figuring out uh, what a product should be and how to make it. Um, UX Cafe, uh, I only found out about it quite recently from, from Lawrence, who runs uh, Spook Studio. Um, it sounds like a really great event, uh, lots of really, really good UX guys uh, and product people here talking about um, lots of interesting stuff so I'm really looking forward to seeing what the people have got to say and just generally meeting a lot of the startups and the people who've come along. Uh, my talk is going to be uh, from a developer's point of view um, on UX design. Uh, it's a slightly different angle obviously um, most of the people here have a lot of uh, experience of user experience design uh, so having worked with user experience designers uh, uh, but from a development point of view I think I'm going to bring a slightly different uh, angle on that. I'm a, a technical product lead at Psychic Studios. Um, we use sort of lean startup principles to help organisations innovate and create new products. Um, we also uh, we also create some of our own startups, uh, so Buddy and the Amazings. Um, if any of you know about any of those. Um, so a few years ago, uh, I'd never heard of user experience uh, design. I was working for a large IT corporation um, and working in a bank. Um, and we had lots of business analysts, uh, but that's not quite the same. Um, the only designers we had were kind of drafted on at the end of a project if we had a bit of budget left over and they could sort of choose colours and stuff. Um, and uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a particularly good system. Um, and then I sort of left and started to work at a startup. Uh, when I first discovered user experience design. And as a bit of a, a revelation, I sort of suddenly realised why it was that nobody liked any of the products that I'd built previously. Um, and, uh, and it was great. Um, but I also started to realise that it was making my life harder and I was getting slower at doing the things that I liked, the things I knew how to do. Um, because um, as a developer, I, can, I know how to, do, how to solve a problem. But if... I want to solve a problem well and do it the right way, it can be quite a lot harder. Um, so um, <laughs> when you're building software, um, so the, the, the software that you use to build software is often quite opinionated, hence the terrible joke. Um, um, but what, by opinionated, what I mean is it has a point of view about how you should go about making software. Um, and one of the ways it does that is it makes it really, really easy for you to do things the way that it thinks you should do them, but not very easy to do it any other way. And Ruby on Rails is a great example of this. It has this idea of a scaffold, um, which you can write a single line and create yourself an app, basically. So um, you, you write a command and you've got a blog. You know, you, you can, um, you've got your views, you've got your database, you've got everything there. Uh, run your server, people can sort of, you know, you can create a blog post, people can read it, one line of code, it's really easy. It was not one line of code, but one command to create it. Uh, and it's really easy. Um, developers like to feel productive. When things are easy and you can get things done quickly and you can write features, you can build stuff, and within, you know, a couple of hours, you've got a great fully featured blog that's running on a server somewhere, you feel really good. You feel motivated to do more. Um, Speed is motivating. Getting stuff done quickly is great. It makes you feel really passionate about what you're doing. It gives you the kind of impetus to do more. And crucially, it's also really valuable. If you're running a startup, um, being able to get something out the door really quickly is obviously incredibly valuable. Getting feedback on stuff is really good. The, the quicker you can get stuff to people, the better. But obviously, you've got a bit of a dilemma, because if the thing that you're getting out is terrible, the feedback that you get back is likely to be terrible. Um, on the contrary, if you, you know, the other flip side is if it's really good and you've spent a lot of time and got it right, the feedback is going to be much more valuable. Um, so it feels like we've kind of got this idea of UX as, as, as kind of exchanging speed for quality. Um, it's not strictly true, but go with it. Um, so how can we have both? If you get better quality, it's going to take you longer to build it, and so you can't, it, you can't iterate and you can't develop as quickly. But if you do it quickly, what you end up with is probably not very good. Um, the first project I did at Psychic Studios, um, I came in right at the beginning as a tech lead. Um, and it was the first project that I'd ever done where 
I was actually involved right from the beginning. So I was doing user research, I was running workshops, um, I was involved in the whole sort of UX process. I was sketching, drawing out, you know, interfaces and stuff that I'd never done before. Um, and I found that not only was I contributing uh, my understanding of what could be built, but also I was getting a lot of understanding about what decisions were being made. So when I came to write the code, I understood why this thing had to be harder than it needed to be. Because I knew I could build it in an hour, but actually someone was asking me to take a week to build it. But I understood why, because I'd been involved. But on the flip side, obviously I realised that designers aren't going out of their way to make my life difficult. They're not deliberately saying, build the hardest thing you can, so spend a week instead of an hour. Um, so, actually, I found that there are lots of things that designers can, uh, the developers can really help when it comes to design. There might be two similar approaches to fix a problem. One of them might take me, you know, a week to build, and one of them might only take a couple of hours to build. The designer doesn't necessarily know that, but having a conversation about it, you can then make an informed decision. That sort of creative tension between those two things allows you to figure out a compromise between the ideal solution that takes a long time and the, uh, the kind of the rather rubbish, the rubbish solution that doesn't. So at Psychic, we work in balanced teams. Um, we kind of a little bit like John, but not everybody can do everything. So <laughs> we take the, uh, so we sort of have people who are good at design, people who are good at technology, and we bung them together on a project uh, and just let them get on with it. Um, the, cr the creative tension that forms between them allows them to m try and make the best use of that time that they've got. So the takeaway um, that I want to, the thing I want you guys to take away, I guess, is get, get technology people involved early on. Um, they can help you balance the feasibility and robustness that the technology brings with the desirability and the value that, uh, that the user experience can bring. And, and just one thing to, to leave with, uh, um, one thing that I found is that it's actually part of the broader user experience. It's something that developers are actually much better placed to do is things like the actual interaction with the website. So how fast is it? How responsive is it? What happens when you click this thing and it needs to go off and spend a minute doing something? Um, how does that interaction work? Some of these, some more complex systems, um, they have this kind of interplay between technology and design that actually you need somebody who understands how the Ajax works maybe or you know, what's happening on the server when it adds it to a queue and spends two minutes doing something. What's the, what's the user seeing? So that kind of, um, that, that side of it is also really, really valuable to, to bring people who understand both sides together. Um, so that's, that's me, hopefully that made some sense. <laughs> <laughs>